Uh, on next is uh, uh, someone that I've known for a little while. He started out comedy at the same time as me. He does a podcast with me. He's a great guy. Please welcome to the stage, Jimmy Ennis. <laughs> I'm also the only one that could work my camera as well, so there'll be no photos of me and loads of photos of everyone else. Ah, oh, so if you want to take photos of me. That was very eager of you there. Go on there. Oh my God, that's a beautiful one. That's a beautiful one. It's not my first time. Um, <laughs> So yeah, but we had to follow that after. Oh, uh. So yeah, so uh, so I had trouble parking it today. So I had to park in a disabled space. And before you all start booing and throwing things at me, just remember that um, not all the disabilities are visible. I've got what you'd call a regional accent. It's helped me back most of my life. And uh, it's, it's been a bit of a struggle, if I'm honest. I, I, I recently did some research on this, and I found that YouGov did a survey where they tested uh, the top 50, or they tested 50 regional accents. And at the bottom of that list, when it came to attractiveness, thanks. You're from Birmingham. Yeah, it was the Birmingham accent. So just by speaking alone, I'm the least sexiest person in this room. Peaky Blinders, that's racist, that program. <laughs> Cillian Murphy is not from Birmingham. He's hot. <laughs> yeah. Everyone at the back thinking, I hope there's a spare microphone. We spit all over it. Anyway, where was I? So yeah, so the Birmingham accent is the least sexiest. Uh, it also came bottom when it came to intelligence and trustworthiness. So what they found that if you're from Birmingham, you're better off staying silent. <laughs> but I'm not from Birmingham. I'm originally from Dudley. <laughs> Dudley. Which is 47th. <laughs> so in that brief moment, I'm already three points sexier than I was a minute ago. And it's, it's nice to live in somewhere like Brighton, it's quite liberal. It's great to be down here for uh, the Gay Pride Festival. Is everyone down here for the parade? Yeah? Yeah, the only time you ever see that many people on the high street of Dudley with placards is when there's rumours about them building a new mosque. <laughs> but I don't have the accent, I don't have the Dudley accent, because my parents try... I do! I don't have a Dudley accent, I'm telling you. That's the Dudley accent. Yeah, I haven't got the Dudley accent because my parents are quite posh and they wanted to beat me out of it. They're from Liverpool. <laughs> my dad would pull me aside and go, James! Why do you not speak in the mother's English? <laughs> I'm not very good at doing accents, I should add. So I tried to hide the Dudley accent. I need all the help I can get, because I've put on weight. I'm the biggest I've ever been, uh, ever. I've got quite a weird body. I've got kind of quite scrawny arms and legs, but I've got quite a big fat belly. I'm a bit like a pregnant greyhound. <laughs> and there's a big thing in this country about, uh, the, you know, I'm overweight, but they call it clinically obese or morbidly obese. And I told this gig a few weeks ago, and there's some Americans in the audience, they looked at me as if to say, you, you're, not, you're not morbidly obese, not compared to back home. As I was watching a program, there was a guy that was so big that he took the whole of a queen-size bed. And when they spoke to his wife and they said, well, what does he eat? She said he eats about two to three buckets of KFC every day. And they said, well, why do you keep feeding him? And she said, because he gets violent. I thought, just leave the room. <laughs> He's not going to chase you. <laughs> this man needs the fire brigade to turn him over in bed. But I've recently turned 40. Not one person seems surprised then. Thanks. Yeah, and, and it's, it's kind of made me a bit more concerned about my health. So I, I recently sent off a couple of strands of my hair for one of these DNA tests to see if I've got any allergies. And they, they came back quite interesting. It said that I was lactose intolerant, I should avoid wheat, and I'm a person of interest to Sussex Police. <laughs> 
It's, it's kind of quite difficult to find what you can eat when you kind of can't eat wheat and you can't eat uh, dairy. I mean, Brighton's quite cool because it's got a lot of different places that cater for all different palates. Even my local cheap shop's got a sign saying, ask us about our ingredients. <laughs> I'll be honest, the beauty of a kebab is the not knowing what's in it. But I get my intolerance from my mom. She's what you might call a casual racist. And that she does it on the last Friday of every month. And I, yeah, as I said, I've got to 40 now, and I started kind of taking a bit more interest in the world around me and uh, the news stories. A lot of people protesting uh, about climate change at the moment. Everyone here in uproar about that? You don't seem that bothered? <laughs> no? Yeah. Not really that bothered? Yeah, yeah, yes! <laughs> it's, it's not key to the jokes, but it's just, just a, a Venn diagram of finding out if, who's interested. But yeah, it's a, a, um, and, I, and I kind of feel that the reason why they, they say that people aren't doing enough about climate change because they want to make money out of things. And I think really it's because the, the scientists, they, I think they're all stoners and they're all just doing these ridiculous experiments. I saw a, a news story today, which is why I've got this peep page here, I've printed off, where scientists trying to check for um, cures of mental health have put rats. Rats in cars, did you see this story? They put rats in cars. I say cars, it's not really a car, it's more of a jam jar on wheels. <laughs> the interesting line in this story about a rat in a jam jar on wheels to test its mental health was it said at the end, the rats were not required to take a driving test at the end of the study. Seven minutes already. Okay, what should I do next? Uh, yeah, another story I saw was about a group that said that paedophiles shouldn't be punished anymore. They should be sent on diversion courses. And the newspaper likened it to the speed awareness course. I thought, fucking hell, I wouldn't want to go on the wrong course by mistake. <laughs> but I've started watching... Ooh, what's that? Where's it going? Where's it going? I'm not going. I'm standing still. <laughs> I can't get past it anyway. It's a fire hazard. Um, so, yeah, so... Um, I've started watching shit TV, I started watching uh, Netflix. You all got Netflix? Yeah. Netflix does that weird thing where if you don't decide what you want to watch, it decides for you and plays an episode. I'm so lazy, I got through a whole episode of America's Got Talent the other day. And you're looking at me judging me, I can, I can sense that. But there was a woman on it who was kind of American big, not Jimmy big. And, uh, and she was in floods of tears when she got the four yeses to go through. And she was saying, you know, my weight has always held me back. Let this prove that no one can ever tell you you can't achieve your dreams. And I think those are beautiful words to live by. And it's always been my dream to be the first female black astronaut into space. <laughs> I've been Jimmy Ennis, thank you very much.